Telecom TV, where ICT connects. Hello and welcome to Telecom TV. My name is Martin Warwick and we are in Northern California, this time in um, Sunnyvale at an Etsy meeting. Uh, it's the fourth Etsy meeting of the ISG, that's the Industry Standardization Group, on NFV. It's a long title and we're going to talk about NFV in rather more settled terms now with a guy called Brian Levy, who is CTO Service Provider Sector of EMEA with Juniper and an old friend. Brian, welcome. Good to see you again. Um, let's begin by asking you about why is NFV going to be so important to the industry in general, but more specifically to service providers? Well, Martin, to answer your question, uh, network, network functions virtualization is fundamental because it addresses the questions that are at most uppermost in the minds of service providers. And those questions are, um, how can I make my network more efficient? How can I solve the issues that, that there's more and more data, more and more requirement on my, requirements on my network all the time? The costs are going like this. How do I balance the costs against the, my revenues coming in? And the other, the other question it, it uh, poses to answer is, how do, I, how do I create the new services for the future? How do I find more revenue? How do I balance my books as an equation for the future? And what exactly has the ISG achieved in the short time it's been in existence? Martin, I think the fundamental thing the ISG has achieved is to achieve a consensus of view, to get people on the same page. When you talk about cloud, people didn't know what it meant. When you, when you talked about SDN, people didn't know what it meant. When you talked about network functions, virtualization, whatever that was, people were really confused. Right? So we've begun to get a common understanding of this immense capability, which is a profound capability. I believe that NFE is actually much more important than SDN. It will change the way that networks are architected fundamentally. It's important as really the shift from multi-protocol networking a few years ago, mini computers, to the, the, you know, the home computers we have today, the PC. It's, it's, it's a profound evolution of networking network architecture. And why? Because it changes the way the network elements are actually actualized. In the past, we had to shift big boxes in. We installed them in, the, in one fixed place in a network. Where it was hard enough to do that. And then we got them going and everything else, and they delivered the services. But now we've got the ability on the fly to make these things beam from one place of the network to another place to do different things at different times and all sorts of things. And we really changed the whole way networks are designed. What impact do you think NFE will have on service provider business models? And when do you think all the hype around NFE, which is, seems to be at its apogee at the moment, will become NFE reality? One of the things that uh, NFE enables is a, a new business model from the point of view of, uh, of buying equipment. Uh, you used to have to buy, pay a lot of capex up front to buy a very large box, lots of scale. You usually bought the scale in the box, although you had some ability to buy different cards as you, as you evolved it and, and evolved the box. But now you've really got the ability to sort of have a, you can have a box for 10 minutes. You can have a box for an hour. It's a whole different way of thinking about things. How do I charge for things? You're more into the world of software licensing than you're into the world of hardware licensing. And you're more into the world of flexibility to the customer. So the customer can have services on demand. They can go into a portal and they can say, I want for an hour, I want to have a connection to the internet, and blah, 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 blah. And so it, it gives great flexibility both to the service provider and to the consumer. And what about the hype? There's a lot of hype in everything that you do. <laughs> uh, but I actually think there was great potential for this architecture. I'm quite excited by it. Uh, I was excited when we made the move to IP. I really thought that was an amazing thing. The first time I got involved in the internet and saw the potential. I had a, I had a, in my career, I had, it was a great thing that when I was working for AT&T years ago and deploying the very first AT&T network, internet network in Europe. I was right at the forefront of this thing. I saw it very early on. It's amazing where it is today. I couldn't have believed it. I couldn't have believed it. When I look at NFE, it's, I feel the same excitement. I feel that it has the capacity to really change things over the next few years. It will change the way we have to train people. I mean, the engineers coming into the industry will have to have a lot more knowledge about software than they had before. Uh, you know, engineers that just worked on software will probably have to have a lot more knowledge of the network. And things, we have to bring these kind of almost these industries together. What are the biggest challenges facing the service provider community when it comes to the adoption of NFE and how, in your view, can they be overcome? I would say that the biggest challenge is cultural uh, at the moment. Uh, just precisely what I said before, that uh, where do you go to with this service that's software? You know, do you, the network guys or is it the IT guys? And then you say, well, we're going to have to deploy 
computers. They say, okay, where do you want to put them? In our central office. It's like, oh, uh, we don't, uh, do they have 24 volts? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Are they NEBS compliant? Uh, you know, are they protected against nuclear pulses? And, uh, no, no, they're just computers. Oh, you know. So we, we, get into, we get into this world of, uh, uh, of, of two cultures sort of coming together. And, it, and it's quite difficult because you don't really know who to have the right conversation with. And when you talk about uh, hypervisors, and moving things about, the network guy says, uh, "And what size plug do I use?" Yeah, <laughs> so it's it's a very different, and uh, the, I think the biggest complexity, really, when you're talking about these services, is, is really that challenge of uh, of cultures and organisation. How will you overcome these problems, given that in the past it's been a case of never the twain shall meet between the uh, IT side of the business, the telcos, the telcos fighting between themselves for market share and dominance and so on? It's, the, the differences uh, are hard to uh, solve in terms of uh, cultures and, uh, and solving it. But what I have seen is that uh, service providers are now doing things like appointing CITOs and CTIOs. Uh, and what I'm also seeing is that usually it's the software guy that seems to get the job. <laughs> so I'm actually seeing the ascendancy of the CIO in a new world. And uh, what is also then interesting is that there's an evolution of thought that goes on. The CIO comes in, he says, oh, this networking is really simple. You know, networks just bits of wires, and I know about data sensors and things that are really complicated. Six months later, you walk into the same person, and you have the discussion, ah, it's time to fit these networks. There are a lot more to them than, you know, than a tin can and a piece of string. Oh, God, this is really... And you can actually see the evolution, and you see these network guys who are around, and they say things like, uh, like computers, yeah, bits of PCs and things, ah, you know, and oh, the network, oh, my God, that's a complicated world. <laughs> yeah. And, of course, that, they start coming together with these computers, and they start having to implement them and do things. It's not, it's not quite as simple as I thought. You know, it's not quite a PC. There's a lot more involved. And I've started to learn about hypervisors and things, and they start to get an understanding of this. Oh, God, this is quite exciting. Never thought you could do this. And you, can, you see these cultures coming together. And the interesting thing is fantastic is usually after that initial period of everybody, you know, starting from where they start, you see a great excitement amongst people and a great enthusiasm for this technology. Another thing that's interesting about NFV and the SDN initiative to a great extent is that for a change, it's not vendor-led but telco-led. How different is that for you in the past? You, the vendors, you're with Juniper, have presented solutions to the telco community to pick up or not pick up. This time the telco society is saying, we want this, you provide it. Boots on the other foot a bit, isn't it? There's a tremendous number of vendors here. <laughs> and there are. And they're actually working very intently on this at the moment. Uh, I like the idea of being customer-led. I like initiatives that are customer-led. I think that gives us a great focus. There's tremendous contribution from the vendor community to, to, to that thought and that leadership that's coming from our customers. And we're working very together in harmony with them to develop the things we need for the future. Um, fourth, uh, thinking vendors, people that are really looking beyond the horizon, are realizing that things are going to have to change significantly. And there are new value chains. There's new value that you can create. There are new things that you can create that you can make money as a vendor on. Right? You don't expect things to be as they are today. Expect that things will change. Throughout my life, things have constantly changed. Go with the change. Go with the change. Embrace the change. You'll find new value chains, new value that you can create with the customers. And that's where we are. Well, Brian, thanks for putting up with the uh, noise, the extraneous noise coming from out there. We're very much backstage here at the event and in the green room and very close to the action, which is why it's sometimes quite hard to talk against the loudspeakers next door. So anyway, pleasure to see you as usual. Thank you. Thank you, Martin. Telecom TV, where ICT connects. <laughs>